Right, what have I got today? Well, it's something new and it's a prototype at this stage, so here it is. Well, actually, Nightcore already sell um, a, a BLT-10, I think this is called the Running Belt, and um, they also sell the NB-1000 Ultralight Power Pack, which is also in this, but what we're actually looking at is this. And I'll take it off just temporarily, because yeah, I'll put this together and show you how it all comes together. This is the actual item here. So it is referred to as the UT05. Still in prototype stages right now when I'm doing this review. So it's going to be a tentative review rather than a full exhaustive review. It'll be straight at the point telling you what it is, how it works, and does it achieve that aim basically. And some slight comparisons with other um, things from Nightcore. I've got a lot of other Nightcore here, stuff here that I, I tested it with. Okay, so... Before I go over this bit, I'll just quickly show you the belt and the power pack that comes with it. So the, um, the B, I think it's the BLT10 running belt, decent running belt, nice and light. I mean, you know, it's so light you can actually see through it, which is exactly what you want when you're running. Less weight is better when you're running. And I've been running for, you know, 15, 20 years nearly. Um, you want lightness. The lighter it is, the less it jiggles about, the better. Um, and this is fully adjustable look, no matter what size you are, or whether you want that hanging, or whether you want that taut and against the body, which is generally preferable, especially when you've got any sort of weight, you don't want it slapping. It's exactly what you do if you were, if you were taking um, a hike you wouldn't want things slapping against the body and it's the same thing you do with a horse you know a pack horse you tie everything down you don't want it banging off the um the structure um, so pretty good in that regard i've left the labels on but i have used this obviously and um, that's how i've got the footage that i'm going to show you in a moment um so there you go blt 10 uh, the running belt so you can get that and there's the details of that so you can see your uh, dimensions there length and weight if you if you really care about that so it's 70 denier, non-elastic and breathable mesh. And in, in that regard, it's great. I wore this a um, number of occasions, no problems. It also comes with this, which is a cinch, basically. Um, it's a double-ended cinch. So what you would do is you put, you know, quick to grab things like a hat or gloves or whatever. And then obviously you just pull that and watch. And it cinches that down. It, it pushes that against the body. And then you can just do that and it will release again. So that's great for quick release stuff. I mean, generally for gloves and things like that, I tend to use the fold method. So I'll put it in the waistband of whatever I'm wearing and let it fold over so I can quickly get to it. But you have this option, especially if you've got um, waterproofs hanging off here or whatever, because you never know when you're out trail running. And like I say, this is fully adjustable. It's sort of double pocketed. So this is your main pocket, which is elasticated to a degree. And you're probably thinking, well, hang on, won't things just fly out of there? Well, they don't, because there's a press stud here. So quickly stick on the press stud here and I'll show you there and I didn't have any problems with that stuff doesn't come out especially if you keep it taut against the body and you can quickly use this pull there you go so what's this central section well generally you, you know if you're going for a run you'd probably put your house keys or your car keys in here but in this instance we have the it's the NB1000 power pack what I'll do is I'll momentarily take that out so look at the size of that it's got like a carbon fiber effect there beautiful very thin now bear in mind this is 10,000 milliamps and just to prove that if we can get the focus it should say on here it's, hot, it's very hard to read there but you can see there capacity 10,000 milliamps very impressive just for comparison here's a one from another company this happens to be eight, only 8,000 so not even the same capacity look at the size difference look at that big difference this is thinner and smaller that's incredible. Bear in mind, that's only 8,000. That's 10,000. They've done an exceptional job. I'm presuming they're using some sort of power stack technology. Um, I've seen in a lot of electric drills recently where they're really, you know, honing down the size on these things. That's exceptional. And in regards to weight, it didn't cause a problem because your first question is going to be, well, does that not bounce around when you're using the UT05? Because this is, this is very, very light. You know, it's only 40 grams, but to power it, you've got to have a power pack. But you wouldn't want to be using something huge like this. So the Nightcore one is exceptional. I didn't have any problems. When this was on in the pocket, on my back, I trail ran, no problems. There was no slapping. And if, and if there is any slapping, all you do is you just, you just adjust this so it's a bit more taut. And in the pocket, I'll show you. 
Um, I took them, I've, I've tried to take this to bits as much as possible to show you. Um, you can use these, I didn't need it, but if you're really going fast, you can use those to prevent that from moving along. Um, you can just anchor things, and the same with the wires, you can anchor them. I didn't have any problems with that though, it was great. Okay, so moving on from that, so basically, the, the UT05 here is two cob lights with a cable that wants some power. So the cable comes through, you can put it through here, and this is Velcro, so you can open that. Comes through, and then you want it to get it in. There's a little hole there, you see, an access hole, like you get on military stuff when you've got antenna holes and things like that. So it comes through into this package, and then here it is here, so it's Type A. It does have a Type C, and it charges on the Type C, no problems, and it also has a little meter. You see that there? See the little three blue lights? And it flashes as it goes up and comes down. So that's still almost full. And I've done loads of training with this. Uh, I've been out for a long period of time. So that's brilliant. And I'll explain why this is very high capacity, uh, which is gonna give you long runs when you compare it to other lights that are using 3000 milliamp hours. So if this is 3000 and it's gonna last a long time at, a, at the, at the non-turbo levels, imagine 10,000. So we'll put that in there. So you would put it in there like that and then you plug your type A in. So we'll get it in. Yeah, get that in. Pull that through. Like that. It's a bit hard doing this behind the camera, but there you go. And then zip it up. Perfect. And then we'll put that out the way. I just want to leave those on so you can see what you'd get close to a retail package. Although, like I say, the UT05 itself is still prototype, so this isn't a full retail review okay so where does it go well it comes round, and then obviously this is the bit at the front of your body so you simply put that round boom and it's a velcro and then these are velcro and you slap them on so stick it on there and stick it on there boom and then that faces the front of your body so if we move that slightly out the way so if you imagine your feet are here and this is the front of your body, so this is flashing out. So there's only two modes, so you can't automatically press it on. You've got to press and hold there, and it turns on. Now look at that, isn't that a nice even beam? And then there's only two modes. So you've got high, low, high, low, high, low. So that gives you a nice wide beam. So what sort of beam are you getting here? Now bear in mind, your body isn't like that, is it? It's curved. So if your body's curved slightly, you're going to get more than 180 degrees, because obviously 180 degrees would be like that, sort of parallel there. But your body's slightly curved. In fact, I'll bring up a photograph here, we'll bring up a photograph. This is me standing with my back to the camera, and I've got this belt on, and I've, I've raised my hands slightly, just so they're out of the way there. So as you, can, as you can see, the actual coverage of this is more than 180 degrees because of the curvature of the body. So extremely impressive. That, to me, is really what you want in a running light and i'll explain why so let's turn that off okay why is that important right in order to understand that i'm going to have to explain some things so time for a quick drawing but i'll, I'll make this as rapid as possible okay so you, you know here's me going for a run right we i can't i can't believe i'm out in the, in the you know out in nature absolutely fantastic i'm loving it i'm running along now traditionally if you have a headlamp and um, most of them um this is a night call utc uh, UT32 by Nightcore, which is great. It is a good running light, I'll, I'll agree with that. So if we turn this on, and uh, what most of them are is a smooth reflector. Now with a smooth reflector, you get your spot there, which is the reflected light using the smooth reflector, and it gives you a little bit of push out. And then you have your spill, which is the light from the LED. So can you see it there? Now bear in mind, I just told you that this light gives you 180 degrees, okay? So let's compare that to this. Now can you see what's happening here? There's your spot firing out, but you see this, that's nowhere near 180 degrees, is it? So you're losing vision to the side slightly. So why would that be important? Well, think about it, okay? You're, you're, you know, you're, you're going for a run and you're wearing a headlamp like this, which is fine, that's not a problem. And then what happens is the light comes out and you get this spot and then a bit of spill. That's fine, but ideally you want to see more of the area which allows for better balance especially in, in pitch black and poor conditions so if you imagine um, if you're trying to balance and go for a run with difficult terrain if you imagine you're having to concentrate on a on that basically it's hard 
to work out what the hell you're doing when you're just looking at that. I mean, this is an extreme over example. You know, I'm going way over the top here. So, but if you imagine, the wider it is, the better. Now, obviously, that's way over the top there. It's not that bad because obviously your head is higher than here. So you pull back, you pull back. You see how it's coming? It's getting wider. I'm trying to oversimplify this here. So one way around that is, is to use a orange peel reflector. Now, if you use an orange peel reflector, what you can do is, now that was smooth, as you can see there, you can use an orange peel reflector. You see how it's not perfectly smooth? Now with that, you're trying to get a bit of a transition. So if we turn that on, that's the white one there. So it's less pronounced, unless we get really close, you can see the spot there and the spill, but you see as we come back there, already gone, see? gone so you don't get this transition you still get the width problem but you, you get more of a transition into those two zones it's much better for running however the for example of that is if you thought well can we not just have really 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 wide well yes you can so if you were to use something like a tir now a tir is going to spread that light more so here is the um hc65 by night core so we'll turn that on now can you see now there is something of a spot there, but it's very quickly gone. In fact, we'll turn it to a higher level, there you go. It's very quickly gone, and as you come back, there's no real issue there. So I'm not at a massive height there, but you see how nice and uniform and smooth that is. It's difficult to, to see those zones. It's much better. Um, and in regards to that, there are even floodier sort of TIRs. If we look at the HC65 here, that's got a more traditional TIR. If we go to that one, which I think is click and hold, might be half click and hold yeah see so hc65 v1 that last one was the v2 see again very smooth see how it's smooth and as you pull back that's great the problem with these is of course you couldn't i couldn't run by that because it's a very low level you get about 24 hours out of this 3000 milliamp hour battery what you need is you need more light close to you you're not trying to get push um so really what you want is ideally is you want something here or, or on your head to just flood this entire area you want all of this where you can actually see what the hell you're doing. Okay, so how can you achieve that? Well, basically you would achieve that by using a system like this. So what it's doing is basically, it's flooding the area in front of you where you need to see in order to run safely. It's as simple as that. Because, you know, that is basically what you want. You want the light where it's supposed to be. So, you know, what else is the benefit of this? Well, this is off your head, you know. So if we were to compare that with the HC65, I've got the HC65 V2 and the UT32. These are all night call lights. Um, this is specifically for running. These aren't specifically for running, but I've used them for trail running. These are big, heavy items on your head. You can negate that fact by using a three-point so if you go to a really cheap light like this, um, this Nebo, I think it is, um, that's just a two-pointer. It's very light. Um, I wouldn't run from this because it's really not enough light and it'll be quite difficult and dangerous. You'd probably twist an angle, but you could sort of push yourself to do it if you felt really brave. Although I don't recommend that. You know, be safe. Um, this is only a two-pointer though, you see. So you're going to get a little bit of flop, although it's not too heavy. So the, the heavier the light gets, the more you need this three-point system. So you've got this around the circumference of your skull, and then this over the top. You need that because of the, the weight of these lights. And the other problem is, even when these are cinched down, you can get bobbing, which is, it, it's tiring on the head, put it that way. Um, and I mean, in comparison, I mean, the HC65 is fine, but it's more of a smooth reflector. It has a quite wide beam look, can you see that? It's not too bad, it's, it's pretty good for a headlamp, but it's not, I, it's not perfect for running because this is more trying to get a little bit of push because as we discussed earlier, it has a smooth reflector, which is more interested generally in distance, which we aren't. Yes, it's got TIR, but it's more for walking. So, you know, we'll put that to one side. Um, you could go for this, which is using a TIR, tries to get a bit floody beam, which is exactly what we want. But again, heavy. That's the problem. It's quite a heavy light, which is unfortunate. Uh, it does have other modes, you know, like red light and things like that. Uh, if we turn this off. It's got red light, but again, that's not really bright enough to run to. I would, I certainly wouldn't anyway. So both of these excellent lights, but for running, probably too heavy. Um, and then you've got this, which is specifically for running. And interestingly, it's dual headed. So you've got this for distance. And then if you twist it around, which you do like that, boosh, you've got an orange peel, which I've used for trail running. It is good. Um, uh, it's not too heavy, actually, in comparison to these other ones. It does work. But sometimes you don't want something on your head. I mean, this isn't. This is a well-designed thing. But back to this. So the, I think this does a better job. 
It only has two modes, it's dead simple, and you've got a big capacity. All those other ones are about 3,000 milliamps each. Is. Some of them are 3,500 milliamps, but this is 10,000 because of the power pack. Big, big difference. You could even take a spare power pack when you think about it and, and put that in a pocket, and then when that runs out, change them over. Quite easy to do, not a problem. Okay, so... This is lighter, it's got a better, wider beam, it's only 40 grams. Yes, I realise you've got to have the power to go with it. Um, if you haven't got that weight on your head. Um, so what's it like to use? Well, this is down near the floor where you actually need it. And in comparison to a headlamp where if you hear a noise and you look away, you can no longer, you know, by the time you look back, you've got to refocus on the ground. This has the light where you want it, it's always there. So very, very interesting concept. And you can slightly angle these as necessary, but I didn't have any problems because these are very floody, as you can see. I'll turn it on. Look, very floody. Brilliant, very bright, actually. So you've got high, low, high, low. I used the low for when I was setting off and trying to get mud off the shoes and things like that. And then I used the high for running. And didn't really heat up. There was a little bit of heat on here, but as you're running, it, it dissipates, no problem. I didn't have any problems with that, and it didn't step down or turn off or do anything silly. I've been very impressed with it so far, um, and I've showed you the width of the light. So, so in regards to would I recommend this? Well, I can't recommend it because it's a prototype, so I only recommend things that are in production and that you can buy in the shops. But in regards to the concept, I think the concept is right. I think they're on the right track, excuse the pun. They are on the right track. One thing I would possibly change, I would maybe put a... Uh, because what happens is, obviously, the light comes out here. I'll probably put a lip on the top of here to prevent any light spillback, because sometimes light spillback can slightly night blind you. I would probably do that. And the only consideration you may want to think about is if you're running competitively or in groups or with other people, that might night blind other people. But to be fair, they should have their own illumination systems anyway, so they should be able to see. But I just want to point that out. Um, so I'm not going to give this a mark out of 10 because it's a prototype and I think it'll be unfair. But I did compare it with all of these other night core lights um, and I compared it with a cheaper um, little single strap here and um, I found this too dangerous to run by what I did was I specifically ran in quite dangerous conditions and um, it was very wet very muddy and the ground I was running on was very dark now because of that um, you get less time to react if you don't have enough light this gave me just enough light although I did slow down slightly for especially muddy sections but as long as there's not too many obstructions it seems to do okay probably if I was mountain running I'd use this and a headlamp because, well, the, the, the obvious reason for that is there is no room for mistakes there on a, on a mountain. You really need to concentrate and you certainly don't want to uh, twist an angle. But in regards to the concept, I think they've done a great job. As usual, Nightcore have made it a very high quality product. And the power, back, power bank that it uses itself is exceptional. 10,000 milliamps for that size smaller than an 8000 from that's a thin small one i could find from other, other another manufacturer and it still beats that uh, you know i think they've done a decent job so what i've done is i've done loads of footage um side by side it was very difficult to get uh, footage of running but i've tried my best to get it in there so if you want to watch that after this be my guest um, and i think nightcore are onto something here um, i've been running for a number of years uh, trail running for about 70 percent of that and um, i like trail running and this is a decent addition and the Velcro isn't cheap. And another thing I want to point out, Zips, they've actually used proper YKK ones. That's another big bugbear of mine. Companies who don't use those, I think YKK is a Japanese company, but they don't tend to break, where some of the other cheaper ones break, and I hate that, because then that, that ruins a product You or if, if you can't get the zip replaced easily, and the whole product fails, but bit of quality there, so nice to see. So UTC5 lighting system, very simple, very straightforward. Um, I would possibly maybe add a lip, I don't know. That's just me being picky. I'm, I'm trying to find problems, but other than that, it does a decent job. And it's just got the two simple modes, high and low. Low, high, low, high. And look at that nice floody beam coming out there. Beautiful. No issues with that. And quite a nice tint. It's it's kind of like a neutral, so very impressed with that as well. Uh, so well done, Nightcore. Anyway, here's some footage of me, so you've had enough of me waffling. I'm off. Bye-bye.